Hi guys and dolls, today I'm going to be sharing with you my everyday foundation routine. These are things that I generally use every day. I do give a lot of options in this video for if you have drier skin or oilier skin. My skin is combination, so I have both. So much fun. Uh, so that, you know, just depending on how my skin feels that day or um, what I'm going to be doing, if I have a breakout or if I got enough sleep or if I didn't get enough sleep, you know, I, I tend to modify what I'm going to do on my skin based on need and what I'm doing and things like that. Uh, so I give you guys lots of product options in this video and um, application tips for different skin types and things like that. So hopefully that's helpful for you. I know I get a lot of requests on a foundation routine and I haven't done one in forever. Like what the what? And I think the reason why I haven't is because it does change. But here's here's a version of foundation that I do basically. Also want to mention that my hair is pink and purple again, you know. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you probably already know that though. So yeah, thank you so much for watching my video and let's go ahead and get on with the tutorial. Alright, so every day I start out by moisturizing my face. I'm not going to go too much into my skincare routine, but because I feel like the moisturizer does affect the overall look of my makeup, I think it's important to mention. Uh, I use CeraVe AM. This is a everyday moisturizer that has zinc oxide as one of the ingredients, so I like that it has a physical block in there to help protect me from the sun. Of course, that's super important. You guys know I'm like the sunscreen police. Uh, and yeah, this is very moisturizing though, so if you have very oily skin, you might find that it makes your skin overly shiny. In fact, my skin is still a little bit shiny and I've already blotted it down with a tissue, which I generally do because it, you know, it's a little dewy, uh, enhancing, if you will. So that's what I use. Uh, what I like about this is that it has all this stuff in it that is really good for your skin that I can't pronounce like ceramides, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid. That one I actually do know how to say. So yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, and that's what I use. So when it comes to makeup primers, I, you know, I'm not really in a committed relationship with any of them. I tend to switch them up because I feel like that's one thing that you might want to switch up. For instance, if I want to have more of a glowy dewy complexion, I might use this one from Tarte that has sort of a pinkish pearl tone to it, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's kind of similar to like MAC strobe cream or something like that, but it's a much more subtle effect and this does actually help to lock on your foundation quite well. If I feel like I'm going to be very oily that day, I might use the Smashbox Photo Finish Light Primer or this one also from Tarte, the Clean Slate Primer, uh, because I feel like they do a better job of controlling oil. Uh, this one I've actually pretty much, uh, like given to my kit, if that makes sense. So I don't really use this myself so much because I want it available for clients. Uh, but that's because it works so well that I'm sacrificing it on myself basically. But anyway, my favorite personal primer is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This I find really smooths the texture of my skin, really makes pores just absolutely disappear. Uh, this one is different from other primers that I've used. This doesn't have the silicone texture, it's more like a lotion. So I just put that on everywhere. What I also like about this primer is that it has SPF 15. So it's just an added layer of protection, which never hurts. I'm just rolling a little bit of this hard candy I am tired under and around my eyes. I've only had this for like a day, but the cold metal balls on it feel good. So. Okay, so for everyday foundation, I tend to favor like medium-ish, maybe full-ish kind of coverage. I don't necessarily need lots of coverage, but I just kind of like having porcelain skin. Here's three different uh, foundations that I've used that I like. And there's a motorcycle. God, I love living in the city. The first one I'm going to share with you today is the Revlon Photo Ready Foundation. This one gives a slightly dewier finish, so if, if you have oilier skin, you might not like this one. Uh, I would say that of the three I'm going to show you today, this has the least amount of coverage. And I have a little bit of trouble matching myself in this one, but, um, and there's also a little bit of, like, little shimmery particles in it, so keep that in mind. If you have oilier skin, you might want to avoid that, but if you have drier skin, you might like that because it gives you that dewy, glowy look. Uh, the next one I'm going to share with you is Max Matchmaster Foundation. This one I say has, like, medium, not quite full, but, like, more medium coverage than this, and, like, this is sheer medium, this is 
true medium, I guess. Uh, this one matches me incredibly well. In fact, I think this is the, the one foundation to rule them all that actually, you know, matches me correctly. And I totally just quoted the Lord of the Rings there. And this one doesn't really have too much of a glowy finish. To me, this looks very skin-like and very natural. It's one of my favorite foundations, actually. And then the last one that I really like is the Makeup Forever High Definition. I use this in 115. You guys, if you read, like, the list of products when I do a, a tutorial, you'll notice that I use this one a lot. This one has full coverage, so I don't use it usually every day, although sometimes I do. Good thing I'm not actually using that one in the tutorial today. I'm going to use Match Master for today's video, and I like to start with foundation and then move on to concealer because I find that concealer, uh, if you use it first, you end up using too much. You basically end up with cakier makeup because you put too much on. You'll conceal, and then you'll put your foundation on, and that messes up all the concealer you just did, and then you go back to conceal it again, and just why, why do the work twice? So for applying foundation, I tend to prefer fluffy brushes like this. So this one is from Samantha Chapman. This is one of the Real Techniques brushes. This is called a buffing brush. This one here is from Sigma. Uh, it's called the uh, F88. has a flat top that's sort of angled, which I really like because it lays nicely against the face and it just buffs it in really nicely. These are great because you can sort of stipple the product on and then buff it out and just give a really great finish. But if your skin is on the drier side, you might want to use a flat brush like this to apply the foundation. Although these brushes are incredibly soft and I don't think it's too much of an issue. Um, but if you have dry skin and you notice that your skin becomes flaky when using a brush like this, then definitely switch to a flat foundation brush. What I'll do is I'll dab, kind of sneak some foundation out from the side, and then I'll sort of pounce it around like yaw, just to get it distributed. And it doesn't look like it's distributed all over the brush, but trust it is. What I'll do is I'll generally start on one side of my face or the other and start pouncing that foundation on in the general area where I want it applied, which is, you know, pretty much the whole face. And then I'll go through after and sort of buff it. So that I don't have, you know, stippling marks all over my face. And I tend to sort of work around my face in a circle for whatever reason. I don't know, it just feels good and natural. You do whatever feels good and natural to you. And then because this brush has these little corn like angles, it's really great for getting around like corners, like the nose. And such. And then I always like to drag the foundation onto the neck a little bit. If you have your foundation all over, you're ready to then see like kind of where you need fine tuning. Like I get a lot of redness right in here and obviously this little guy needs to go away. So I'm going to use the OCC concealer. Uh, this is a relatively new product and I'm using the shade Y0. This is a really good concealer. It's very thin in texture while it still has a lot of pigmentation, which is really nice. A couple of different ways that you can apply your concealer. You can use a flat brush to apply it and then use a fluffy brush to blend it out. Or even apply it with your finger and then use the fluffy brush to blend it out, just whatever you're more comfortable with. You could also use a flat brush like this one from Sigma that is um, the like partner to the big one. I'm going to actually use the flat brush and the fluff fluffy brush today because this one is still dirty from me using some pink stuff with it the other day. So what these brushes are is this is a flat filbert cut concealer type brush. You can get a craft store brush if that works for you. In fact, here's like the one from Urban Decay that I showed in my brow tutorial the other day. This one would also work as like a dual purpose because it has like concealer and the fluffy one to blend it out all in one. And then this is a synthetic fluffy, uh, it's supposed to be like a crease brush, but I like it for concealer. So I just sneak a little bit of that out and kind of get it in a nice thin layer. And then I start applying it where I feel like I need a little more help. Like, you know. And then I'll take the fluffy brush and just blur the edge. Really, really softly. I'm holding the brush really far back. Because what's the point of putting it on if you're just going to take it off? Another thing I like about using a flat brush is that if you do have acne that is textured, you can sort of do like a crosshatch type thing where you kind of put the concealer in and all the nooks and crannies which sounds like a bad thing but trust me when you have acne you don't really care you basically just want it covered up so and then I'm just blurring the edge around the acne the acne the zit the blemish uh, to uh yeah to like 
lessen the effect of the concealer, I'm losing my talent for words. So after I put on all my concealer and foundation and all that stuff, I like to set my makeup and this is probably the most important step for making the makeup last. Some people are able to just do foundation and not set it and they're very lucky, but most of us need to set our makeup. Now depending on what your needs are, you might want to use a colorless setting powder like the Makeup Forever HD powder or this one from uh, Purely Cosmetics, their diamond setting powder, powder, which is my actual favorite and I've bought this few times now actually because I like it so much. Or you could use a color, a powder with a little bit of color. Like this one from MAC, this is the Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. This is kind of like my holy grail product. Actually both of those are like my two favorite powders probably. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of the one with a little bit more coverage just because I've been having some breakouts lately so I want a little more coverage. I'm going to use this Royal and Langnickel brush. This is the BX05. And I'm just going to pat that along the powder and it gives you a nice even coat. Love this brush. And what I'll do is I'll pat the powder on first to set. And then once it's all applied, I will come through and sort of buff it like this. And this will not only just give it a better texture overall, but it will kick off any excess powder on the face. And then I go under the under eye with just whatever's left. You don't want lots of extra powder on the under eye. And in terms of foundation, that's it. That is what I do on a daily basis. A couple of tips I want to include here at the end. The first one is that if you use the Samantha Chapman buffing brush for foundation, this is probably my favorite to be honest, uh, you can use it for your liquid. Wipe it off on a paper towel until it feels dry to the touch and then use it for your powder. Genius! This is like my favorite foundation brush ever of all time. Uh, so there's one tip. The next tip is that when you do your foundation and everything, and then, you know, usually halfway through the day, especially those of us with oilier skin or combination skin, you want to touch up. Uh, and what you don't want to do is to keep putting layers of powder foundation on. So I would recommend, uh, unless you need more coverage, to not use something like the Mineralized Skin Finish Natural for touch-ups. I'll admit I'm kind of bad and I, I do use this for touch-ups sometimes, but you definitely don't want to use anything like Studio Fix because you're that's totally a foundation. You're just putting more foundation on top of your foundation and pretty soon you have that super cake face thing going on. Not really great. But of course, you know, we, we get shiny throughout the day, especially if you're oily. So one thing I would recommend is uh, blotting films, not blotting papers, although those are fine too. Uh, but the blotting papers are like a thin paper and I find personally that they don't really absorb that well and that they tend to muss up my makeup. Whereas these blotting films like this one, uh, this one's from CVS brand, but also MAC sells them. They are made out of like a kind of almost rubbery feeling consistency and they are so genius at wicking away excess oil. In fact, I mean I just applied this and this will even get rid of some of the excess oil I have on my face right now. As you can see the the paper is becoming kind of like a clearish kind of color. It's because it's taking away the oil but it didn't disrupt my makeup. So excellent product. It's actually something I sometimes use after my moisturizer before I apply my foundation. So that's a really great product. Can't live without that. And then if you still need a little extra, you know, touching up, you can use a, like a blotting powder or something like that. So this is MAC blot powder, colorless powder, great for touch-ups. Uh, this is the Laura Mercier translucent powder in the pressed form. Also fantastic. I really, really like this one lately. This has been kind of my go-to. And then the final thing I want to talk to you guys about is foundation on the eyelids or on the eye area. Now I think that you, if you don't need concealer, you can put foundation on the under eye, but I'm, I'm basically completely against putting it on the eyelid, except for in certain situations where it might be okay, but my feeling is that if you're going to do that, you're going to put your foundation on and then you're going to set it with powder, or maybe you're not going to do that part, but then you'll put primer on and then foundation and you're just adding extra texture and extra layers of stuff onto your eyelids and it's just not necessary. Um, just adding texture to the eyes is just not a great idea whether you're 55 or 15, you know, you just, just don't do it. And <laughs> just, it's not attractive. So just 
skip it and you know save yourself the extra step and then the other thing is that if you put concealers and foundations and things like that on your eyelid it can actually make your eyeshadow crease so that's kind of like defeating the whole you know purpose of all that good stuff sometimes I will put concealer uh, you know under my brow and things like that but not on the actual like eyelid down here so I hope that makes sense. I hope that this video was helpful for some of you who had questions about complexion and foundation and all that good stuff. And yeah, have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in my next video. Remember to just be yourself. See you bye. This is from uh, Purely Cosmetics. I was going to say Diamond Cosmetics. This is a diamond... Uh, uh,